The government is under pressure to reveal which foreign country hacked Australia's parliament and major political parties, as senior minister Matthias Cormann claims he had no idea he had never paid for flights for a family holiday. Follow all the latest political news live. Morrison defends Matthias Kormonskid Morrison discussed a couple of other topics with Neil Mitchell, including the Sky News report that 265 asylum seekers on Manus Island and Nauru have been rejected by the United States under its extreme vetting process, they were always not going to accept everybody, Mr. Morrison said. The Prime Minister said America had rejected the asylum seekers, for reasons that would suggest that they weren't welcome in the US, because they were concerned about who they were, do they end up in Australia, Mitchell asked, well not under our laws. But they could under labours, Mr Morrison said, in a lot of these cases, these people won't have serious convictions, but they may well be facing charges, the other group is the group who have been found not to be refugees. They're there because they refuse to go home. They're not refugees, it should be noted that some of those 265 asylum seekers rejected by the US probably fall under Donald Trump's so-called Muslim travel ban, which prevents people from certain countries from entering the United States. On another subject, Mr. Morrison said it was a bit of a leap to say refugee footballer Hakeem Al-Arabi would not have arrested in Thailand if not for a screw-up by the Australian Border Force, which was revealed in Senate estimates yesterday. Essentially, the ABF didn't get around to sending a crucial email, I'm not suggesting that incident was not something that needs to be addressed, Mr. Morrison said, it was my job to get him, Hakim, home and I'm very pleased that Hakim has come home, the Prime Minister defended Matthias Corman, who says, he had no idea a travel company called Helloworld had paid for his $2,780 flights to Singapore for a family holiday in 2017, he thought they were going to bill him and he didn't get billed, Mr. Morrison said, he's paid for them, after he got caught, Mitchell shot back. Finally, Mr. Morrison rejected the accusation that ministers Michael Iacash and Michael Keenan had not cooperated with the AWU investigation, they were written to and they were asked to respond, which they did. and they provided responses and the police have not sought any further statements from them, he said. Yesterday the AFP revealed it had requested interviews with both ministers on multiple occasions. They responded with a letter. PM can't rule out Chinatha Prime Minister went on 3AW this morning, where he discussed the hacking of Australia's parliament and political parties with host Neil Mitchell, can you rule out China as the main suspect, Mitchell asked, well I'm not commenting on where it might have come from, other than to say the sophistication has led agencies to advise us this is a state actor, Mr Morrison said, what does that mean? What's a state actor? Mitchell replied, well it means it's a government, Mr Morrison said. At that point the conversation started to go around in circles, do you know who did it or not, Mitchell asked, no what I'm saying is, you don't go and make those claims wildly. We don't have any information. I don't have any information that would allow me to make that claim, the Prime Minister said, you don't know who did it, the host pressed, I've said what I've said Neil, earlier, the head of the Australian Cyber Security Centre said he didn't know which country was behind the cyber attack, there are only a handful of states that can do this type of thing but it is hard for us to really come and definitively say what it is. Alistair McGibbon told Sky News, because of the type of infrastructure used in this case and by their methodologies inside the system, they are confident it is a nation state. What we don't know is who, China's foreign ministry has issued a statement condemning the irresponsible speculation it was behind the cyber attack, one should present abundant evidence when investigating and determining the nature of a cyberspace activity, instead of making baseless speculations and firing indiscriminate shots at others, said spokesman Zhang Shang, irresponsible reports, accusations, pressurizing and sanctions will only heighten tensions and confrontation in cyberspace and poison the atmosphere for cooperation, Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Picture, App Source
App Minister's Mysterious Free Flights Finance Minister Matthias Corman says he had no idea a travel company called Hello World had paid for his $2,780 flights to Singapore for a family holiday in 2017. The flights for Mr. Corman, his wife and children were booked on Hello World's staff and family travel account, the Sydney Morning Herald reports. Soon after the flights were booked, a subsidiary of the travel company won a finance department tender worth $300 million per year. Hello World's chief executive, Liberal Party treasurer Andrew Burns, told the newspaper an internal administrative oversight had led to Mr. Corman's credit card not being charged. Mr. Corman claims he only learned of the discrepancy when the reporters contacted him about it yesterday. He has since paid for the flights. The minister says he had no influence over the tender process. The travel booked through Hello World back in July 2017 was on commercial terms and should have been charged to my credit card straight away, as instructed by me at the time, Mr. Corman said in a statement this morning, that is what I genuinely thought happened. At no point until approached by the media yesterday did I receive any reminders that the payment due remained outstanding, I can confirm that I had absolutely no involvement in either the selection of the preferred tenderer or the awarding of the contract, Matthias Gorman. Picture, Gary Ramage Source News Corp Australia Dighton, Paladin A distraction Peter Dutton has accused Labour of seizing on the Paladin controversy as a distraction from the asylum seeker debate. This week they are under pressure for passing a law that's going to bring in people of bad character. All of a sudden they've got an interest in this $400 million, Mr. Dunn said. In Senate estimates yesterday, officials from Mr. Dutton's Department of Home Affairs were grilled about the controversial $423 million contract awarded to Paladin to provide security, among other services, on Manus Island. Media reports had claimed Paladin won the contract despite not having enough money to start it, and despite its founder's history of bad debts, what is reported in the media is in some parts not consistent with the reality of our records, Home Affairs Secretary Michael Petzulo told the hearing. He denied the accusation that the government had paid $10 million to Paladin up front. The contract of the company which previously handled security and other services on Manus Island was due to run out on October 31, 2016. The officials said PNG had initially committed to run the tender process to find a replacement but then advised Australia it could not proceed because its government was in caretaker mode. The department was required to step in and assist PNG with the provision of services. Mr. Petsulo said PNG changed its mind from saying initially we'll take care of the centre, we'll deliver the services, we'll run the tender, we're not going to let people starve, we're not going to let people go without food or water. Another official, Cheryl Ann Moy, gave the hearing more detail, saying there was very little time for an open tender process and in any case, the department was uncertain how many companies would apply. We did not have time for an open tender, Ms. Moy said. We weren't even sure anyone would be in the market to provide the services. We talked to the Department of Finance. We talked to the government solicitor. We talked to our external probity advisor and looked at what options we had. They provided advice that we could approach an organization that would be able to deliver the services. This led to the department invoking a particular regulation which allowed it to approach a provider, in this case, Paladin, directly. The officials clarified that their contract was with the Singapore-based company Paladin, not the subsidiary registered to a beach shack at the end of a dirt road on Kangaroo Island. And they stressed that Peter Dutton had nothing to do with the procurement process. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton at Parliament House in Canberra. Source. News Corp Australia Sheena Lashes, irresponsible accusations that China has hit back at suggestions it was behind the hacking of Parliament and Australia's major political parties. Yesterday Scott Morrison revealed experts believe a state actor was behind the cyber attack, though he did not specify which state. Others immediately speculated it could be China.
Now a spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry has responded, one should present abundant evidence when investigating and determining the nature of a cyberspace activity, instead of making baseless speculations and firing indiscriminate shots at others, said Zheng Shang. Irresponsible reports, accusations, pressurizing and sanctions will only heighten tensions and confrontation in cyberspace and poison the atmosphere for cooperation. Yesterday the head of the Australian Cyber Security Centre, Alistair McGibbon, admitted he did not know what the hackers may have accessed. We will continue to work with our intelligence and law enforcement agencies, both here and overseas, to try to determine what they were trying to do.